Hello and welcome to this episode of Tales from the Dark Side, navigating us through this hyper lanes this week, the cocky pilot of the best Star Wars show in the galaxy. You think you know him, you know he made the Kessel Run in 12 parsecs, but did you know that he did it with a parking brake on? He hates knowing the odds, he hates pronouncing long words even more. It's Big Man Marco. And his faithful co-pilot and our rabbit hole sheriff, he's no longer invited to barbecues at Lando's after eating all the Nerf burgers and drinking all the Jawa juice. And oh, the unfortunate furball incident. Yeah, Sorry, princess. 50% hair, 50% stomach, all heart. It's the mighty solo Wookiee. <laughs> and last and certainly least, it's the Jedi who's just getting by. And that's not his lightsaber. He's just happy to see you. Ben Kenobi's brother's sister's cousin. It's me, Jedi Johnson, 22. All right. Uh, hey, today we are covering Darth. Thank you again to Jedi. As you can see, Jedi Johnson is back again with us. We're going to be reviewing uh, Vader then. We're going to keep it going. We're going to go into eight. Nine and uh, ten today, right? That's how it works. That is how the numeric system works. Is after seven comes eight, nine, and ten. We'll be covering eight, nine, ten. We'll go over it real quickly. Eight. This is if you remember from last time we said it's going to slow down on variants of this grouping. There is one variant. Uh, it is not in number eight. Eight actually only has one cover. Cover A. Uh, we have got this scroll on the right. So if you want to pause the scroll on the right for all you people, for all those people that don't remember, we. Afra had gone and she had gotten a group of bounty hunters, an IG-90 unit, a Bosk, and a B-Box, and she is taking them to the outer rim. She decides to use this like little meteor to protect herself. Now, uh, we don't know. We thought she was working for Vader, but it seems like she may or may not be at this point. We're not 100% true. We do know that she is going after the ship that Vader confiscated all those credits, right? And the Imperials did from Jabba the Hutt. Technically, they're Jabba the Hutt's credits, and another syndicate took them. And um, she's going to rob that ship. She brings everybody in there to rob the ship. They get into the inside there. There is some probe droids. The IG unit takes them out. It looks like pretty cool. A lot of shooting, a lot of blasting. There's a lot of action in this. It's kind of cool to see all the bounty hunters kind of work together and how they were actually going to raid the ship. The only problem is, as you can see right here, all the credits go flying out into the air. Oh no. Um, the B beatbox kind of sucks them in, or is that BT? I think the BT droid sucks them in actually, like her little assassin crazy droid sucks in enough to make a couple box loads, as you can see. And she's like, Hey, uh, sorry, we lost most of it. What are we gonna do here? Well, Black K being an honorable thief, I guess would you say, said uh he says, hey, you know what? We're I'll only take uh you speak Wookiee. Uh what does it say? I'll only take what what the cost of the mission was. Is that what that says? Solo? Yeah. 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 So there he goes. A little could you give us a little uh Wookiee here or something? Anything that you could interject that we'd appreciate. He's he's just kind of giving his uh, uh all right. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of them don't really trust Afra, and she's like, Well, what do you want me to do? You saw what happened, there's nothing here I can do about it. Please just trust me. Um, obviously, they said just don't mess with bounty hunters. And then well, she was trying to get every little bit she could too, right? Because even though, didn't she say something like, uh, okay, before we divvy it up, though, I got to take my cut for out, or my expenses need to be uh, subtracted. And they're like, no, nah, no, nah, that's, that's on you. Yeah, they did say that. Yeah, you're right. They said that. And they pretty much gave her like, don't, you could tell she's trying to, she's like, well, I don't have as much respect for property as you guys do. Or she's trying to make all these little excuses and kind of swindle her way. As you can see, she's smiling at the bottom or whatever. They cut it up. They take their portions and they're like, you really shouldn't mess with bounty hunters. Uh, in the meantime, she meets up with Black K on a different planet. And it turns out that Black K, uh, well, he, he, he was sucking up all the other credits at the time. So he has all the rest <laughs> of the credits with him. And guess who comes back? Oh, well, it's Darth Vader behind her. And Vader says, uh, you know, I need those credits pretty much for, you want, look, for a guy who hates droids so much, right? Like, 
Vader hates droids. It's, it's notorious. He always destroys them. He's, he's done it through almost all the series. He's always bad mouthing droids and everything else. Why? He wants to build a droid factory to create an army. So, and he had a army of droids behind him before. So he doesn't hate all droids. He loves B1 battle droids, apparently. Apparently, that's his thing. But so <laughs> why? They're so inherently bad. Yeah. It's <laughs> they like, just are so let's, prone to problems. Let, let's make a true, let's make a. They bring back uh, good uh, memories. Right. <laughs> let's make a, a, uh, a droid that's worse than a stormtrooper with aim and everything else. And then, yeah, I don't know why. Anyways, uh, so you get him here saying, hey, look, I need the money so that we can uh, hire bounty hunters and build this droid factory. And she goes, oh, yeah, that stinks, but I'll keep a little bit of something, too, because he says, I have another mission for you. And he's going to put her on another mission. Uh, we get back to our man Tag here. Uh, very interesting character still around. Um, I do love that panel that uh, where they show the three different planets right there and, and kind of a quick glimpse. Yeah, that one right there. That's just I, I like that panel a lot. I, it yeah, just it's cool. Is my eye for some reason. So pretty much what's happening in this panel is, and we were gonna get into it, fill it in. Um, so tag fills Invader and the twins are there obviously, and so you remember all the other little mis misfit toys that. Uh, Cecilo put together, Silo put together are here, and he's like, Listen, uh, you guys have to go out there. The rebels have gone crazy while Vader is gone. They have been no. attacking. Quick question. Mm -hmm. I don't understand on that last panel. The is three... he giving them the name Plasma Devils? Is that's... that the name of the group right there? That is that the name of the Rebels one? group. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. That's yeah, the Rebel right. group. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Rebel group. The, the ones that did all the damage over here was the Plasma Devils. Okay. I know. Not a great name. Uh, but whatever, the Plasma Devils, they are. So he's like, hey, you got to get out there, the twins and everybody else. And he's telling uh, our friend uh, Commander Carbon over here, Kavon, whatever. Of course, if he those three are there, so is, uh, so is Tulin, the, the lady that's got the uh, – oh, there she is with all her little yeah. Troy things. And pretty much saying, hey, look, he's in charge. You guys are supposed to do this. The Emperor told you to. Lots of words on this page. He sure does like to talk. Um, but then again, when they started off the first part of this book with a lot of action, so I guess we got to fill in. I think we could have cleared all this without without 15 panels of him talking, but you know, you got to every once in a while, you have to have the writer's work. Oh, uh, I was I just broke the surprise. However, uh, as you recall, Vader uh, choked his last uh, babysitter that was assigned to him, and he <laughs> found out that he's a traitor. Uh, so they need to give him a new babysitter, and we get a first appearance real quickly. Uh, of Inspector Thanos. Thanos. Oh, good. I did get it right. Thanos. Everybody's going with Thanos. 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 Everybody's going with Thanos. Okay, Thanos. Inspector Thanos it is. Uh, Inspector Thanos, great character. Uh, sticks around for a little bit. Spoiler alert, but you'll we'll get into it a little bit later. Also has some tie-ins to Afra. Um, you get to see him here. He does come up with a couple other pavers. I like how they gave him the monocle uh, type look and then like the white connecting. Monopoly guy. Yeah, I mean, they gave him, like, a Monopoly guy and then gave him, like, the old uh, Colonel beard, too. So, like, whatever uh, LaRocco was doing, uh, I think he hit the road. Yeah, the old Lemmy. The, the almost Lemmy, you know, from Motorhead. Yeah. Mo mustache, yeah. you know, with the, with the no chin. And I'll have to dig out some pictures somewhere. I, 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 I mean, like this character, I, but I don't like this character. So, I mean... <sighs> He, I, I like the fact he's really good at his job, and I think yeah. So he's, he's no, you know, he's going to end up sport, uh, challenging Vader, but uh, uh, something about him, I don't know. Well, right I off the I'm bat, just, uh, right off the bat, I think I just got a little tired of uh, Vader versus you know Vader having a shadow. I, I don't know. This guy seems a little different though, and we'll get into how he changes a little bit. But I actually thought the first guy seemed like a like. Why wouldn't you just choke out tag two? Where this guy, I think, seems like he's more confident, right? Like the first guy, uh, more cunning. Oh, yeah, whatever his name is, Ohoa or whatever, the one guy that he just choked out a couple books ago. And this guy seems like, no, I mean, like, look at how pressed his uniform is. This guy is imperial to the core, and he is one of those characters. How I see him is, yes, one of those characters where you just want to smack up the back of the head and go, like, you're smart, you're a good worker. Why are you working for the Empire? You dit, 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 dit. like you know, like, 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 they pay better, man. They got more credits. 
to believe that tag is to this day, well not to this day because i bet she's probably i mean well it's all fiction anyways but we never got to see the death scene of him right uh and we saw like a tarkin and stuff to that effect like like why isn't vader just choke him out that's a different topic but anyway so let's <laughs> let's get into the next book uh the next book like i said goes back to two covers we now have got the cover a uh number nine on the left there uh solo could you give us a quick description please yeah, so the left cover is Vader standing on the deck of uh, the his um, Star Destroyer, and he's looking out and he's seeing several, one, what, four, four Star Destroyers in line with some Tie Fighters going around, kind of checking out space. Got a really cool reflection of Vader in the window, and I loved how they did that with. His reflection in the window, but you can still see all of the all the stars and all the star destroyers. And I mean, that's just really, really good artwork right there that you get the depth, you get the reflection, plus you get everything beyond it. I mean, that is a beautiful piece of work right there. That is not easy to do. And then we've got the incentive variant on the right. And we got Vader holding the iconic Vader fist. And troopers on the right and left of them in front of the big, what door is that? I can't ever, I can't remember. Big giant steel blaster door. Another great cover. Yeah, I mean, these covers are so good. The The variant cover's awesome. I just wish that if they had, I just wish it was a more important book, right? Like if it was the last book, if it was number eight, or if it was number like, I don't know, three or something like that. That variant is is definitely cool. That's how you, that's how I picture Vader, um, a strong Vader, Vader with the force ready to go in. You don't want him knocking on your door. That is Vader. All right, so um, it's a bad day. It's a bad, yeah, it's a bad day if he comes through your door. We don't have the scroll for this, unfortunately. We miss the scroll, but we start off with that Jedi squad. What were they called again? Devils door, Devil Phasma Devils. Phasma Phasma Devils. Pasma Devils. All the good and names were taken. I know. But I will tell you this. LaRocca really did. The one thing about LaRocca sometimes is like, sometimes you're like, okay, whatever. And then sometimes he just comes up with panels like this. The Rebels uh, go down a hole and they come to the back of Vader. And of course, uh, Vader just kills it, right? Like there's lines that Vader's has. And, you know, this is kind of one of them where he's just telling the Rebels like, Welcome. Yeah, it's over for you. Like it yeah. just is over. And then you see. Go ahead. The, I? Uh, I just want to ask a question because this confused me when I read it the first time, and then when I reread it again. So, is this happening before the heist, the Afra heist, so no. that Vader has like an alibi, or is this happening presently? So yeah, no. So one of the things that Tag was sending him in the last book was sending him out to get these rebels. This is actually happening after. This is actually happening yet. Isn't it? I sure sh sure think it's happening. After. It, yeah. I took it as it's happening after because there's the three planets he has to go down onto. And, and it is because of what's coming up in these panels. Real yeah. quickly. And I love what he says there. The rebellion has many failings. Yeah. Your slowness is most aggravating. Like, I'm, I mean, wait I'm here to just take you guys out. You kept me waiting. Like, <laughs> and then he, they, keep me yeah. waiting. I'm here to kill you, and I've been here for like 20 minutes. You are late for your your. Our desktop. appointment was for 1:30. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotta so Thanoff Thanoff gets the report uh, back on another planet. He's on another portion of it too. So they're you know those original three planets where they're trying to take down everything, and him and Vader are going back and forth, and they do a lot of talky talky, and and he tells them pretty much like, hey, listen. I know the last guy might have been a traitor or whatever. I'm not that guy. Not only am I not that guy, I'm smarter than you. I'm smarter than everybody else. And I'm really darn good at what I do. And gosh darn it, people really like me. And <laughs> he didn't say that last part. But uh, <laughs> Vader pretty much gives him the, we will see about that. Um, I will say that he does do a couple things. He defers to Vader too a lot of times. So he's babysitting Vader and answering to Vader at the same time. We will see it coming up. He he definitely has respect for Vader. Either that or he's just trying to appease Vader's ego because he doesn't want his throat choked. Where, yeah, I mean uh, he's yeah. not he's, he's not like the choked. last guy who was just talking junk to Vader and that didn't end well. Um, or anybody who's ever done that before. He actually, yeah, you're right. I think he has a combination of he's smart enough not to get uh force choked, and he also 
has a little bit of respect for him. I mean, he's going to investigate it. He's investigating. The, he does tell Vader he's looking into the credit situation. I think that's why you were asking about the Rebel thing is because after that, the scene comes up, the scene over here where he talks to him about the credits, like, mm-hmm. well, the credit all the credit. Yeah, the credit heist that Afra did. Like head he, detective. He's like, I'm going to find out who did it and blah, blah, blah. So they think it's the Rebels. They think it is the Phasma Dragon or whatever they're called, whatever terrible name they get. The, do you the, think, the do you think uh, Thanos was, do you think uh, sh- he has like kind of a Sherlock Holmes kind of quality to him a little bit? I kind of got that vibe as well a little bit, yeah. Did you? I thought yeah. he was. You no, know, I mean, as far as his investigation, it just seems like he's very inquisitive, very, oh, you yeah. know, detail-oriented. Uh yeah, know. well, I, yes. Uh, so they're, they're ta- I'm not going to give away the end of the book till we get to the end of the book, and this is where I'm going to re-answer. I'll wait till he's, the end. To he's question. no world's greatest detective, but he's, you know, he's he's trying. He's getting up. There. For an Imperial, he's pretty pretty good. Let's put it that way. He's not a stormtrooper. <laughs> There's a reason why. So Vader's about to kill the Rebels so that he can blame the heist on the Rebels. Uh, and then Inspector Curso, I mean, uh, Thay Noth, uh, comes in and is like, hey, 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 don't do anything. But one of the twins goes nutty and kills the guy, anyways. Um, these twins are a little defective, I think. I don't, I don't like the twins. We can get to that later. I, yeah. I just, I'm not, yeah. I'm not well, loving these. I'm not no, loving the twins. No, I'm, I, this is the first time Jedi's read it too. So let's not spoil what happens to everybody. Uh, to Jedi in the chat, please, because he has not read them yet. So this is the first time, right, Jedi? This was the first time you went over it. Pretty much was this book. You haven't. No, well, it. I mean, I read it. I read it. About two years ago, but my memory sucks. So oh, I forgot good. it. So I'm I'm, I'm I'm reliving it now. Reliving it now. Okay. So uh, either way, let's just not ruin what goes on a couple down uh, from here, which I just ruined by saying that. So, <laughs> the, <laughs> so the twins are getting a reprimand. At this point, I thought like, wow, are the twins in on it? They aren't in on it. I don't think. I think they're just uh, at this point in the book, they're just uh, idiots. Uh, <laughs> yes, he's all. <laughs> Then Oth is all mad about it. He's like, I got to get to the bottom of this. And they're killing people. What's going on? And they're choking it. Why aren't you upset about this? Blah, 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 blah. And there's like, look, the guy, the guy did it or whatever. He was going to blow something up and this and that and the other thing. And he's like, I'm not quite buying it. Do you see this? Uh, do you see this little spectacle here in my eye? I'm very smart. Look at my mustache. And, <laughs> and Vader goes, okay. Vader goes, all right. Well, we'll see about that. And then they flash over to this, which is Afro now. Remember, she's kind of still on a mission for Vader. We want to figure out what this mission is. By the way, Triple Zero has been amazing through this whole thing. In the previous book, he had some comment like, man, I wish more meat bags or, or humanoids would uh, would have died. Like, not enough humanoids died. Now he gets into a little skit where he talks about gambling. And Afra asks him if he's any good at gambling. He goes, I'm trained to kill people. I'm trained to be a protocol. I'm trained for a lot of things. But no, I'm absolutely terrible at gambling. But I love it, so I'm gonna go do it anyway. And yeah, don't you think there should be like a movie, kind of like a Chucky movie with Triple Zero, where he's there's like a Triple Zero toy that some child gets, and it just starts going crazy. I really do hope that uh, I would that, watch that. I really hope that in droids they run into Triple Zero and uh, BT one sometimes because, like, I mean, it'd be funny to have like that. It'd just be funny to have them. Um, we do get a first. She, Afra ends up running into a character by the name of Anti, the Anti, the Anti. Uh, it is this character right here. That's an interesting looking character. Um, it looks like kind of the Scream character, right? With the melted it, fit, your ass. Exactly. I thought of the same thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was going to bring that up when we go to, to rank uh, a little later, but yeah, I, I could not get Scream out of my head as I was looking at this and the channels the the credits are just the I mean or well, not the credits I mean the 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 back and forth isn't the best they make like gambling jokes that aren't like of course they call it that's not the ante it's the whatever I don't know whatever and uh of course she also changes her facial structure changes towards some of the ending panels here too yeah um, I was gonna ask you if you guys noticed that like her the way they draw her all of a sudden changes. It was weird. It goes back and forth a lot through these books. It's it's very interesting. I don't know why that... Eh, there we go. Different than for now. Okay, so she makes a deal. She gives the guy some credits. He gives the name of... She was looking for um, this guy named Danin. 
um, who is supposed to have been uh, close to Padme. So she wants to find out the location. That's what Vader did. She wanted for some information. He gives it to him and they're headed to Naboo. Man, I just don't know like Naboo. Every, who hasn't been to Naboo? So have you been to Naboo? Well, a couple of times. Huh. I mean, it's on my bucket list. Tatooine, I mean, I- Naboo, Kashyyyk, Dagobah. I, it, I guy gets around a little bit, you know. You're in, you're in your ship. You're flying around. You got to make a stop. I don't. I mean, whatever's happening still at Naboo, which we know from books of what's going on in Naboo, it, it just seems like uh, it's still the center of the universe. Anyway, so Afro makes is going to make a stop at Naboo, obviously. Uh, with that being said, we'll go back once again. No variant again. We get to uh, number ten. There you go. That's the cover over there. Nice cover. I love this cover. I love this cover. My favorite. The only thing I don't like about this cover is that she looks just. Her face just. It's just off a hair. It just it looks. Are you going to say bit she looks goofy, like in the last panels? But the way they did the the Vader helmet in the stone behind her, like, like, a, mm. Oh man, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a stone inlay on the ground and Afra is just standing there and it's just her backdrop. It, it, oh, I love this cover. I love it. I love this cover too. I thought you were going to say she looks a little Rose Tico. Uh, no offense to the Rose Tico fans yeah, out there, uh, but I, yeah. She does. No, she I, does. I, I love I love this cover too. It's one of my favorites. This and number eight are probably my favorites. She maybe does, but I think it's the creasing in her smile. Like it's weird to see her smile like that without like because later on you always see like the Chester cat type grimace that she has. And I think that's yeah. kind of like close mouth smile kind of puts it off because you're not Could used to that, that type of thing, maybe. All right. Well, I you didn't have to pause the scroll because uh we talked during it. So hopefully. Unless you're enamored with this cover like we are, and then you can just pause it and do the scroll real quickly. This is cool because I always love these creatures. Uh, They're big, and they literally run real fast to run things over. We get right into the action. Vader has found out where the dragon's uh, mansion is. The dragon is supposed to be the person that's in charge of the whole group that the rebel group that they're hunting down. He asks this one if, uh, you know, it's the Max Rebo. He asks Max Rebo if um if he'll tell him everything and max rebo's cousin maxi rebo says yeah i'll tell you everything and vader says oh that's a shame <laughs> i'm killing him love, because, i love that that is classic vader right there. it was like I that's what that. i'm saying like there's points in this where you get like even when they're going with the you know sending all these inspectors after him and everything else or all these like babysitters like the classic vader moments through this arc is unrivaled in the other arc or in the other versions of it. Cause we apparently can't call this volume one anymore. Cause now they're trying to change it to all the TPBs are volume, but we'll still call it volume. So, so this Gillian run of Vader, it's probably one of the most like Vader esque Vader's you can get. That's a thing. Now I just it's, said that it's real, real deal Vader for sure. Mm-hmm. So there you go. He gives him the quick swipe. That was kind of cool. Uh oh, why did you kill him? Well, he was going to let off a bomb and he was going to blow everybody, but he didn't have a trigger on him. He lied to you. Isn't that how the force works? And Vader comes out again and uses the Vader thing, go like, Hey, listen, brother, you don't know, you don't know what you're talking about, but I'd stop talking about the force like that. <laughs> it was just pretty cool, man. I mean, he definitely comes down on him. And then here's where you get the Sherlock thing where he's like, Oh, well, I got to get this open. Do you mind if I try? Like, he's asking permission from Vader to try stuff. And Vader, he's like, Well, it might be destroyed. And you're just like, well, I don't think Vader cares if the stuff gets destroyed or not because he's setting them all up. Anyhow, so Vader goes, yeah, go ahead, man. It's on you. But I, then he gives him the line like, but I wouldn't fail if I were you, pretty much. Um, or what is the line he says? Uh, be sure not to. Yeah, pretty much be sure not to fail. Okay. So yeah, the guy goes up, beep, 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 wrong, beep, 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 wrong. Ding, ding, ding. Whoop, he hit it. And then in the last panel, you get the kind of snarky, yeah, I got it, huh? So he opens up the safe and gets the thing out. They flash us back to Naboo now. And all of a sudden, we see another protocol droid. Naboo, protocol droids. I didn't know they were popular in Naboo, but apparently they are too. Uh, We see Aphra's ship, the Ark up there, a little bit of a um, missile coming down. 
How did well, that not kill him? Star that Wars. Top panel. Okay, yeah. got it. Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> he had up his deflector shields. Come on. Yeah, but it blew off part of the building. It like blew oh, yeah, it just blew yeah. the hell out of the building. Also, by the way, uh, what also I think Jedi, you're saying is like, why did they blow up part of the building when it's open air and they could have just jumped in through the open air? <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, that too. Uh, uh, but they did anyway. So they used the missile, the target guide missile, which I didn't know. Whatever. Anyways, uh, something looked more like GI Joe scene than an actual Star Wars scene. There, beep, beep, beep. Yep, yep. We get it. Here they come. He goes in there, and this little this little plaque pulls off this blaster gun and starts blasting, which is really cool. Next, though, we get back to one of my favorite. I think one of our, all of our favorite. Triple Zero gets some good play in here. We decided to. Uh, oh, we didn't decide to do that, did we? No, oh, we decided to do it someplace. We'll see if we can pull it up here in a little bit. No, we can't. Triple Zero ends up frying. Oh, read the book. Go buy it for yourself. He ends up frying the protocol droid in the background, or was it BT One? One of them fries, and BT One does fries the little the little protocol droid, which is kind of funny in the background. Um, and then they knock him down. They trap him. He doesn't have a protocol droid anymore. They're saying, "Listen." We need to find out information. He goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anything about anything. I'm just some random dude. And Afra goes, yeah, I don't think you are. But here, let me tell you the story. And then does this little backstory. And this is the thing about it. I didn't know at this time because they haven't really gotten to her parents yet. Like he, she tells a story about her mom and the dad and everything, this, that, and the other thing, and how she got a rocket launcher and blew it up. And she's like, yeah, real sorry, sorry, huh? And he's like, yeah, it sounds bad. And he, she goes, yeah, well, whatever. Um, triple zero, go to work and do what you do. And he goes, oh, I definitely will. And the guy goes, I'm not going to tell you anything. And he goes, that's what I like to hear. You're so ador- does he say you're so adorable? He calls him like cute, adorable. Yeah, he does call him. Adorable. Oh, you're you so are adorable. just adorable. I love it when you play your your part. Yeah, yeah. And then you get the no, no, no. There's more screaming that goes on, more pleading later on. Uh, please come on, forgive me, please. She goes through a little reminiscing period. She's looking at uh, like the family, and Triple Zero comes out and goes, uh, "I believe M- Mr. Thane is feeling more talkative now to Afra." And here we go. She comes in. She says, "So what do you got to tell me?" And he goes, uh, "And she goes, you just got to verify what we know." And she says, "There, you were supposed to be the guy who was dressing." Um, Padme for the funeral thing. She read his plaque, which has his name from Padme, said that he was there pretty much. And he goes, yeah, that was me. And she goes, she wasn't actually pregnant anymore. She already had the kid. Yes. And it was a boy, correct? And he goes, yeah, she had a boy. So I don't know if we covered this in a previous uh, issue or not, but so he's a he's a mortician, right? I mean, that's... Yeah, in the that's, last... Yeah, yeah. That's what's yeah. revealed. That That's what... Or it used to be a mortician, maybe. So she's look. Afra's looking for him because Vader's looking to find out. So she goes and finds out. Not only is it this guy, and this is his name, which is what Vader wanted, but also that he is the mortician that that he wanted. Vader wanted to double check that that he had a son. That's what he wanted to double check here. That's what I was going to get into, and that's why I was stressing the son portion of it. So she went up and asked him because he was, uh, yeah, the prepare mortician, I guess. Yeah, whatever it was, he did dress her. Yep, you're right, for the pride and everything else. Um, But she, instead of saying, like, was she pregnant? Did she have children? She instead said, we know she had a kid. You just have to verify it, that he had a son. And he said, yes, he had. she had a son. Well, she and references she goes, the baby bump, too, right? And some, like, she image does. of her. Yeah, so there was two images. There was a the image of her before and then image when she was in the pry, and they had made up that she looked like she had a baby bump still, and she didn't. So he then she goes, Oh, thanks for thanks for verifying that, and we're good. So what he told her was the truth from a certain point, certain point of, view. of view. Yep. Uh yeah, so it is from a certain point of view, it was the truth. So he goes, okay, finish him off, tri- or do your do your job, triple zero. Then we get a couple other panels, but he goes, uh, thanks for your cooperation, and finishes them off, ends it for him. They set the whole place on fire, which is kind of ironic, but not because it's you know. So, uh, has anyone noticed? Maybe it's just me. Maybe maybe there's some scenes and I just haven't seen it. Uh, when triple zero does his uh, business, when he takes care of someone, she's never. She always leaves the room or she turns her back or something. Uh, 
And uh, so either she doesn't have the stomach. I kind of get the feeling Triple Zero might enjoy an audience. I don't know, but. Maybe she just doesn't have the stomach for it. I think that's it. I think she doesn't have the stomach. I think that was kind of the, the, when she was doing the talk about her mom and her dad was kind of the lead in to roughly show you that she doesn't have the stomach for violence. Um, with that being said, yeah, you're right. She always turns around and goes. But she doesn't really mind when Black Hay does stuff, like hits people over the head. I don't know. She decides when she's going to like violence and when she's not going to like violence. Apparently, she doesn't like people dying, well, maybe. I think what Black K does and what Triple Zero <laughs> and BT do are about two different levels there on that spectrum. You Black are K is right. a little more, little more like, yeah, I punched a guy in the face a couple of times. And BT and Triple Zero are like, yeah, we did some very unethical type of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Which is funny though, because she in the beginning she does have that like link to droids where she's very you know symptomatic about it, and she wasn't. I don't think she was ever planning on giving the droids back to the droid Grata. I think she was always planning on using them. So I mean, I know Vader made her do it, but like I don't think she was ever planning on giving it back because she spent a lot of time. So she meets back up with Vader and says, "Yep, you're right. You do it." Or well, she had a son, and then she asks a couple more questions like, "Is that the boy that blew up the the the, the Death Star?" And he just gives her the thing. And she goes, okay, well, what else do you want me to do? What's my next job? What do we got going on? Are we going to go attack the emperor? Blah, 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 blah. And he goes, uh, she, he, or are you scared? And he goes, oh, I have no fears. Um, he sucks nothing. And then we get to see the like camera droid in the background. Do, 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 do. What does that mean? Um, these are, I don't, man, I enjoyed this three part of the arc. I really did. I liked almost all of it. You do get some like minor first that uh, have playback. Obviously, they killed one guy. They killed the last guy, so he ain't coming back. But you do get to see um, our man Sherlock Holmes, aka Thanos, Thanos, uh, a couple more times. And actually, I think we're going to see him coming up in 11, 12, 13, 14, and maybe even 15. Um, so we're going to have him around for a while. We're also going to see the twins coming back up through here real quickly. But let's go over some. Hey, 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 hey. Some people might like the like like the twins. Uh, just, you know, that's an old thing for for Star Wars. Let's put more twins out there because, you know, twins. Um, never heard well, of that before. I'll talk about it in my review. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's give a review on number eight. Solo Wookie, since you like reviewed so much, give us a review on number eight. Uh, I like this book. It's a good, solid book. I, it's a four all day. I like the artwork. Um, it, again, the artwork in these books generally, I believe, is very, very good. Once in a while, you get a little uh, peak and valley. It, sometimes on a panel or two, it slides off, but it, it comes back strong always. Um, I, I like I like the cover. It, it's just, it's a solid read. Some of it does get a bit wordy, but anytime you're on a Death Star or a Star Destroyer or a, you know what I mean? Every time that you have an Imperial or, or you know, Separatist officer or, or whatever the f faction may be at the time, they get a little wordy. They like to talk. So it, it's a solid four in my book. All right, Jedi, what do you got? So, uh, man, I feel like I'm copying off of uh, Solo Wookiee's paper here. I gave it a four as well. Um, so what I like, I like the cover. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite uh, covers, aside from probably three. And I, I, like I said before, I like ten as well. But uh, I like the cover. Uh, I like that Afra kind of start. We start seeing Afra's ingenuity. Uh, I know the whole asteroid using the asteroid as a weapon and then actually slingshotting another asteroid and using that as a weapon. Uh, I initially thought that, man, Afra's real smart. And then I, I still think it was Afra's idea, although it kind of started creeping in my mind. Was that Vader's kind of? Because Vader's kind of, you know, has some ideas like that. But I think I'm, I'm going to say it was Afra's idea, so she's smart. So we start seeing kind of her Indiana Jones kind of, because she is kind of an Indiana Jones type kind of, uh, using uh, these clever little uh, tricks and things. And I think we also see her first double cross uh, when she double crosses uh, the uh, the other bounty hunters when, like, oh, you know, something went wrong. This is all the credits we got. But, you know, meanwhile, uh, 
black uh, black K is out there raking in the real bounty. Uh, so those are the pros. So that's I liked it. The cons. Um, <laughs> I feel like I needed a con. I really liked it, uh, but I guess if I'm going to give it a con, I'm still not too excited about the uh, the cyclo replacement stuff that's going on. We'll see how that turns out. You know, like I said, I'm going through this kind of again relearning. So maybe it'll maybe it'll grab me later. But right now, I'm just not feeling it. So four. All right. Uh, you know, the sad part is it's like we're all stealing each other's stuff because I actually have a four on this, too. I have a four on it because of these little, the, the, a couple issues. Uh, one, I do actually like that. Like, we've seen her kind of do it before with Grata under the pressure of Vader, but you really see her, like, deadpan lie to somebody. And even though I'd read it before, it kind of opened it up again where it was like, man, she was really good at this. I couldn't remember exactly what happened. I knew that the credit thing was off, but like, how did it go? And when you get through it, I thought they did a really great job of it, especially uh, with bounty hunters and some famous bounty hunters. And by the way, if you're going to do bounty hunters in a book, you did it right. So like win, win, win. Those are the check marks that keep going off. Um, the Vader back and forth. I think it was her. I think it, a lot of it had to be her plan. I think he, Vader kind of was like, you need to get this done and figure it out, especially considering Black K was involved with it. But I do think Black K, uh, Vader had told him something too. So maybe it was a plan between the two of them. Either way, you get to start to see a beautiful friendship between the two of them work out that, that plays uh, later down the road, which we really weren't supposed to talk about. But whatever, who cares? We all know that they're friends. Um, or they're not friends. Whatever they are, it works out pretty well down the road sometimes for them. I like all that portion of it. I will say uh, it didn't get a five because you're right. Uh, a couple too many words in it. It is a comic book. Just to remember, it could have done a little bit better with some of the artwork in it. And on top of that, you could have let the artwork tell a little bit more of the story. So you got a four, but hey, it's pretty darn close. It was really a good one. Like I said, I like this entire arc. So I think you probably knew that I was going to give a four to that. Okay, Solo, put yourself in the main screen. Let's give you the next one. You get number nine number nine all right so uh like this book again a lot of the same i gotta go i gotta go four um and this I, I like to see this really part of this book that i really like is watching his detective skills when he starts getting into it when he's really starting he's he's not out to get vader He's not, you know, being a detective. When I was reading it, I didn't think he was getting the information to really just hound down on Vader and be the the guy that turned Vader in and one tags, you know, approval or whatever. I didn't get that feeling at all. You, I read it as I really am just, I like to know just because. I am good at being a detective. I want to I want to figure it out for myself and I want to have the truth knowing that I have the evidence of the truth. And not necessarily to make anyone bigger, better, better, worse, whatever, but just cuz he wants to know. And I thought they really did a good job describing and kind of putting that feeling in there and, and not that he was trying to find the answer to make Vader the bad guy and he's going to be Vader's enemy and they're going to have it out. I thought they really wrote that well. I, I should give it a four and a half because that's a hard right. I got to go four and a half. Oh, go four and a half. Solo Wookiee, uh, usually the toughest grader, has gone four, four and a half. Jedi, uh, let's see what you do. <laughs> Well, I don't know. You can probably tell by the look on my face as uh, Wookie was talking that uh, I didn't copy off his paper on this one because I gave this one a three. Uh, I'll tell you why. A lot of it, I, I do agree, especially after kind of rehashing it with you guys, uh, that I, I appreciate the uh, Thanos, uh, his detective, you know, skills. Uh, so I enjoy that now more than maybe when I was making my list. But so my pros are. Um, the ending, I like the ending where uh, Afro is confronting the uh, the mortician, getting the answers that, of course, we all already know. But uh, so I, I like that scene, uh, <laughs> kind of tongue in cheek here. I like that the uh, the murderer from Scream made his uh, first Star Wars comic book appearance. So that's that's good. Get your get, get those into CGC. Uh, 
So uh, cons, I did not. So this is where uh, this kind of goes back to a conversation we had off off cameras. I did not like that cover. The cover that Solo went on and on about with the starships. I didn't like it, and I guess it, maybe it reminded me a little bit of that homage uh, to Clone Wars uh, number one a little bit, where they're looking out the window, and and you know, I don't want to. I'm just I'm. I'm not a fan of homages. Sorry, not, but uh, we can go into that later if we need to, or maybe in the chat. Um, so I just feel like I've seen that picture a thousand times. Yeah. Uh, anyway. yeah. Um, I still don't care about the twins. Uh, they're, they're, they're dicks. They're, they're me. <laughs> they kill people for, I don't know. They just I almost feel like they're just, you know, they're just, they're just dicks. Uh, I enjoyed the story. I thought the, the story was, um, it was okay, but the ending really brought it up, and uh, so yeah, I give it a three. Mm, nice. Sorry, yeah. So maybe no. I'm, I'm I'm taking the uh, the mantle from Solo on on being rough. I hope not. Uh, Solo's so good at it. <laughs> no, it's good. I'm uh, I'm gonna give it a four, and why I'm gonna give it a four is it hits a couple things with me. One, we get to see uh, the opening scene. You get to see Vader being Vader. Been waiting for you forever. You know, you get to cut down the Jedi. You get to see all types of stuff. Uh, Wait, it's not the opening scene, is it? Either way, uh, you get to see Vader being... Uh, man, we're going to have to do that. Yeah, it is. I got it, right? Mm -hmm. We get to see Vader cutting him down. You get to see him waiting for him. On top of that, we also get to see uh, a casino, which, you know, that's fun. But we get to see Triple Zero being, like, funny. But, like, funny in a weird way where you don't quite get it. Um where he's like, yeah, I'm going to gamble. He goes through the list of everything he can do. That was pretty cool. The ante name is terrible. Uh, looking like a melting scream, kind of not great. The back and forth for a little bit was pretty good. Not the joke parts of it, but like what it was all about, talking about them. Like they brought up Padme before. They brought up the twins and kind of, or, or at least Luke in different ways. This was kind of the better way to do it. I thought. I thought they did an actually good job on it. Uh, and it made a lot of sense. It made a lot of sense why she had that credit pieces and everything else with her that she could pay out. It was good. Killing off rebels, Vader style is always great in my mind. And then to actually see, like uh, Solo said, the development of Thanos, like you thought going into it, he was just going to be another lackey, right? Like even the stuff he was saying at the beginning of, of the last book, you're like, okay, yeah, sure. You're so smart. But then in this one, you actually get to see he is mm -hmm. he's kind of smart, man. Yeah. Uh, as far as the twin thing, it was unexpected. And it kind of plays with you like, are they all on his side or not? And I so I didn't dislike it so bad. But it didn't make a ton of sense. You know what I mean? But it's like, well, why are they killing them? Because you know Vader's like trying to set it up. And then you saw the from the previous book because of Black K, you're like, well, maybe he's in charge of all these people too. Yeah, I'm not... I like Silo and I like the idea of him. I'm not a huge fan of his crew uh, of the Misfit Toys. So that's why we're getting a four on that. Guys, we got one more book. I think you both are going to go goo goo because you guys love the covers of this book. Go ahead. So this is a solid book. I mean, this is, again, great writing, great art. I mean, it's a four all day long. Um, it does help explains more of that that thanos and um but didn't didn't give it that that detective punch like the last one did so just keeps it at that four um i i really like i just everything that happens in this one just it, it these three books are all really really good i i just really like these three arcs the art and everything the twins it's it's just more filler it, it, they're they're you know inevitably they're just the little antagonists that vader's finally gonna go enough you know so you tolerate it for as long as you have to it's a solid four though all right jedi you're up four for, man solo is giving hold on solo is giving let me just recap real quickly because I think this is a moment in history to write down. I don't know what's going on with Solo, but we've gotten a four, four and a half, and a four out of Solo. All right, Jedi. Let's see what you Okay. Done. So I'm back. I'm back to copying off, off Solo. I gave this one a four. Uh, what I like, love the cover. Uh, love it. It's like, uh, in fact, I, I don't own that cover. 
and I was going going through some boxes today at my comic book store to try and find this cover, and I didn't. Uh, so I, I need I need that one. Uh, so I love the cover. Uh, I like that. Uh, I don't think there were any twins in this one. Was there twins in this one? So that's a bonus. Uh, I like the opening panel where you know Vader's like, so uh, you know, are you gonna tell us this this? And the guy's like, oh yeah, I'll tell you what everyone know. Okay, well that's. <laughs> wrong answer. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, I love that classic Vader. Uh, I did like the uh, the t interrogation with uh, Triple Zero uh, and I think Comedex, Tom, whatever. Yeah, the, yeah. the yeah him. Yeah. Uh, so what I didn't like because uh, I feel like I got to have something, but I really like the book. Um, no, nothing. I, I like this book. Uh, I mean, it was it was solid pretty much through. I, I give it a four. Uh, I'm not going to go four and a half. I, I saved those for when Boba Fett shows his face, uh, and he didn't. <laughs> so we're going to give it a four. All right. Um, cool. I, that's great. Uh, you are at a four, a three, and a four. I'm up next. I'm going to give it a three and a half. And this is why uh, I really did once again enjoy it, and I enjoyed the arc. I definitely enjoyed the first part because Vader being Vader. If you start off Vader being Vader, it's always good in my books, and you did. You gave us a little bit of Vader being Vader. Uh, some of the issues that I had is as much as I enjoyed some of the interactions with Triple Zero, I think they played it a little bit up too much in this book, right? And although uh, at the Afra playback when she was talking to the Commodore or what, whatever Ten Ten. At one point, I was just like, okay, all right, okay, yeah, yeah, you're funny, but, like, where is it going, right? It was a little bit out of place there. And then to go back and just, like, okay, you're going to torture him, I get that, but then, like, no, 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 okay, the torture, we get it, the guy's torturing, like, you're, it's a torture droid, like, what, what's going on with this? Like I said, it wasn't bad, I still gave it three and a half. They did give us a little bit of a cliffhanger kind of a shit at the end with the camera thing. But also the back and forth from Vader there and then shading towards the end. I haven't hit them up, especially when they changed Afra's face 16 times in the last book. But I'm starting to give them like, all right, that was a full page where it was like, did you just kind of like put a film over this? Or what What did, What happened here? Uh, maybe I'm being a little too critical on it. But like, I have a feeling like we have to be a little bit more critical because this is like, again, um, it's not going to get a lot of low grades. This this. This whole Gillian run is not going to get a lot of low grades on me, so I think I do have to kind of nitpick some of the stuff there. And maybe I'm nitpicking, but I'm going to give it three and a half. Um, overall, so you gave it a four, four and a half, and a four. What is your overall grade for this three-part arc? Um, four. It's, four? It's a, yeah, it's a solid four. Pretty Very easy good. four. Jedi, you're up. What do we got for the three-part arc? You gave it a four, a three, and a four. I guess I'll just go with the average three and a half. Uh, and just uh, make it make it simple. Uh, three and a half. Which again, I like. I like three and a half was a good grade. It's passing. Yeah, grade. I had gave it a four, a three and a half, and a four. But as an arc altogether, I'm actually going to come up with a four and a half on it because putting these three books together mm -hmm. uh, and reading it as one part made them even like it's tough to grade them individually because when I do, I could nitpick here and mm -hmm. nitpick there. And this and that. But when you put these three together, there's really a lot in it. It covers a lot of stuff. There's a lot of Vader just being B.A. Vader in it, right? Like what you'd expect him to say in the next panel. And not only did they give that to you, they gave it to you a lot of times in a full panel or a solo shot or something that was very Vader-esque. I hate to say Vader-esque, but Vader-esque. I mean, it's something. Like it yeah. gave you that feeling of Vader, um, something you miss a lot sometimes. Like some. It wasn't just fanfare. This was like Marco fanfare. They they played these three books to me. You know, everything from Afra going back and forth, the 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 droids making little jokes that were corny enough to be funny. You know, they were dad jokes. Let's get real. He was telling dad jokes. I'm down with that. I like a dad joke every once in a while. I'm a dad. It's not mine. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, you're just... Anyways, but I like that type of stuff. And then it was like, the only downside I'll give it to him, and, and, and probably why I couldn't give it a, a four and a half, is because the inconsistency in the artwork. There was just a little bit too much of the inconsistency in the artwork, or I probably would have given it that, you know, it would have been a home run five, you know what I mean? But that's where I give it. Uh, that's what we got. 
does anybody else have anything else? Anything else? Or are we good to go? I think we're good. Please like and subscribe, and may the force be with you. Always. Hey, we're going to cover uh, 11, 12, and 13. No, we're going to call it 11, 12, 13, and 14 because we don't stop on the 13. That's bad luck. Have a good one.